So let's start to look how we can create a marker line here and we will make sure that this has some advanced features so it will be connected to the options. So let's start to look how we can add markers to a line chart in Chart.js 4. So we have this basic boiler template and if you want to get this one you can find this here on Chart.js3.com getting started and this link you can find as well in the description box. Once you scroll down copy this chunk of code here and you're good to go. Next if you want to get the final source code of this video or at the very end check out my patreon where i have many source codes of every video i cover all right so what i'm going to do here first of all i want to have a line chart out of this so i'm going to scroll down here and let's say here this will be our line chart save this refresh there we are so now we have this and to make it a bit more clear i'll make this border width a bit thicker and I'll just remove every color except for the lower one, which create, gives us a black line. There you are. Very nice and solid black. So the next thing what I want to do is I want to create a marker basically from this point all the way here, this line to highlight this certain action, uh, a section basically or that area. So how do we do this? First of all, we need to create a custom plugin. So in the options, I'm going to say a comma, I'm going to say a plugins and then Going to put in here a bracket because we could have more than one plugin and in this case i'll give this plugin a name the line marker which is basically a constant as well so i'm going to say here slash slash line marker plugin block and then i'm going to say a constant line marker and in here i'm going to give it an id name the line marker and this will be important later on and next what i want to do is i want to draw the so-called marker. So how do I draw them to make sure that this line will be on top and the marker will be at the very back. So what I'm going to say here, I'm going to say here before data sets draw. So before we draw the data set, I want this to uh, draw basically items. So then I'm going to say here, chart, arcs and plugins. And then put in here a function error expression and there we are. So now we're good to go and we can now start to do something. And what I want to do now is first of all, a object destructuring. So I'm going to say constant and then I'm going to say here CTX. And if you don't know what an object destructuring is, I have a video in the description box showing exactly what that is. So make sure you watch that video. So then I have CTX. I'll say here the chart area, which is also very important. And again, there's a video for that as well in the description box. I'll get the top and bottom. I'm not sure if we need anything else, so I'll just leave it like that. And next what I want to do is the scales. I want to have here, uh, what we need here is probably the X scale. All right, so once I did this, I'm going to say it equals the chart object. So now we are good to go. And what I want to do, first of all, is to do here ctx.save to save all variables above. Now, what I want is I want to draw a line from this point all the way down to Wednesday here. So to do this, I'm going to say here ctx dot and I'm going to use here begin path. This is important so that nothing else or the colors or lines will bleed over to any other uh, element on the canvas. So make sure you have this one. So then because we're going to just say here this is a new element or new shape. Please create and disconnect everything and make a new shape. So now what I want to do is I want to say ctx dot stroke style to give it a color. So what will be the color? Well, in this case, let's say I'm going to make this gray or well, let's make this blue for now. We have like a uh, fixed blue color. And then what I want to do is I want to define here the thickness of the line. So I'm going to say ctx.line width and then the line width will be three pixels. Next, I want to start to draw the line. And what I want to do is basically start at this very point and then go down to here. So what I need to do here, I'm going to say ctx.move2 to indicate our starting point. And this is basically an X and Y coordinate. What we know, because we have here the chart area, and this is what we call the top of the chart area. I want to be at the very top here for the Y variable. So this here is basically this item. So we have that one. Next, what I know is that this, if I want to move it to the left or from left to right on the X scale, I need to go to Wednesday and Wednesday is index. Well, we can calculate zero, one, two. So this is index number two. So what I need to do is here on the X scale. And so you have this X, the dot get pixel for value. And basically what I want to do is 
on the X scale, get the value of number two and convert this into a pixel coordination. So once we have this, we have now our first starting point. Of course, this is just a starting point. And if I save this, nothing will happen yet because we didn't draw it yet, but we also have nothing else on there, no line to connect. So now I'm going to do that one. I'm going to say ctx.line2. And now what I will do is exactly the same, except this is the same position here, but what I want to do with the line, when it's here, it starts here, it will go down straight up to this Wednesday here. So I'm going to say here, the very bottom, because that's the bottom of the chart area. So if I save this, refresh, you'll see nothing happens. You might say, what's going on? Well, we didn't indicate yet to draw it. This here is just a intention to draw, but not the official drawing command. So I'm going to say CTX dot stroke to draw the line now, save, refresh. There we are. So now we have this here that looks very nice. And we could change this to, for example, number three. And you'll see now it would jump to Thursday. So now we have all of this. I want to finalize it with something a bit more advanced because we have these colors and the thickness here. You might say, this is very complicated. How can my user make, or how can I make it easier for the user? Well, let's use this line marker ID here. I'm going to copy that and go down here. And then we're going to say here after the scales, pay attention here, comma, we're going to say here plugins. And yes, this plugins is different from this plugins here. So make sure you pay attention. So then in here, in the plugins object, I'm going to say here the line marker. And then in here, what I could say is, for example, I want the color and the line or the border width of that. So I'm going to say here, maybe border color. We're going to make our own border color and we can indicate this one. Let's say this will be red instead of blue. And later on, you will see the color difference. Next, what I want to do is, is the border width. And we're going to indicate here, this will be 10 pixels for now. So you can just see the differences. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. I'm going to say here, how do I connect that to this? Well, we have here this ID that will recognize it. So from the plugins, this plugins, object connects to the line marker ID immediately. So it knows which plugin this is. So I'm going to say here, plugins, and basically in the plugins, it understands it's the ID of line marker, and then I want to get here the border color. So I just say here, plugins dot border color, or whatever the name is here down, and then I save this and I refresh, and now you can see it becomes red. We can do the same logic now, for here down, instead of border color, it should be border width. Save that, refresh, and now we have a very thick border. So let's change that back into number three, save, refresh, and there we are, and we have this nicely.